Hey there everybody, Kendall here. Goodness, you know, I think I'm going to take a day off from Conscious Coffee and then three weeks go by. That's absolutely crazy how quickly time flies. Maybe it's just because I'm so busy too. I think that that's probably it. I was with um, out with a friend the other day and we were walking and everything and <laughs> after we got done walking he looked at me and he said, you are the busiest person that I know. Seriously, like you are the busiest person. And to me, I go, I'm not that busy, but I am that busy. I am. You would think that COVID would have slowed me down. I think that COVID sped me up. I don't know what the heck I'm doing, but definitely I've been go, 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 go so much. I was supposed to be gone this weekend traveling and ended up um, rescheduling that trip just because, well, a little bit of downtime, a little bit of slowing the fuck down is needed in life, you know, a little bit of recoup. So I am actually taking five days off from clients, five days off from the hustle and the bustle and the going. And instead I'm gonna hustle and bustle myself right in my happy little home and get done the things that I wanna get done for my own self care, my own connections, my own well being, and all that good stuff. But that's not what we're talking about today. Today, today, I have just been, I was, busy doing other things and this has been bouncing around in my head and has been bouncing around actually probably for the last like week, week and a half. And it is really, you know, like when we freely give it up, well, what am I talking about? Men, you're probably thinking I'm talking about ladies giving up the sex, giving it up. And I am and I am not all at the same time. What I'm talking about is when we give up our turn on, when we give up our freedom, our passion, our drive, the, the stuff that really truly ignites. And it has been definitely a running theme in my practice and what I've even experienced. And didn't I knew? No. You know those moments where you know that you've done something? And, you know, I've known for a long time, let's just say for a few years now not operating at all speed. I know. It's me to just and who says I'm the busiest person that he knows and I am pretty fucking busy. But I'm still not at optimum speed. And I'm not talking about how much can you jam into your day. That's not why I'm talking about optimum speed. I'm talking about that optimum power, that optimum force where you ignite so just in love with your life and vibrant and the vitality. And you know, right now, I think that a lot of people just aren't feeling that, right? Gotten into like these little ruts, <laughs> these little ruts where we're stuck at home, we're stuck in, you know, work life, we're stuck with a certain pattern in our families, all this different stuff. And it's just this mundane, rigorous routine. If it wasn't that before, well, the current state of our life has definitely made it such, right? But here's the thing. That's not living at an optimum level. That's not thriving. That's not enjoying your life and who the fuck you are and all this yumminess that we have inside of us. This, we have to be able to give to the world, to each other, to self. So I've known for some time that I'm not running at 100%. And I don't think that any of us can ever really truly run at a hundred percent, but we can run at 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 percent. You know, it's hard to get at that hundred percent and keep it at a hundred percent, but we can crank it up. Low vibration we find ourselves into. Just like I said, this is practice for the last couple of weeks. Myself, like my friend said, not running at that optimal level, right? Because somewhere along the path, somewhere relationships, typically it is a relationship that does this to us. Everything is relationship though, right? We have relationship with our health. We have relationship with God. We have relationship with money. We have relationship with our sex. We have relationship with our partners, with our children, with our friends, with our sisters, brothers, family, blah, 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 blah. We have all these relationships. Everything is relationship oriented in our world. Okay. And Riz dependent is shows the result from anything, right? 
So somewhere along the line, typically, a relationship gets us to it gets us to give up our joy. It gets us to give up our turn on. And that's what we're talking about. Can you imagine that? Like, doesn't that sound crazy? I'm in this relationship with this person or in this in this relationship job, and due to this, I've just given up freely, freely my turn on for life, freely my playful self, freely my joy, freely just being me. I've sacrificed that for this relationship. And I'm doing it because that's what I think I'm supposed to do. I think that that's the path responsibility to having a life I feel like kind of makes me go this isn't this isn't for me, right? And then, and then I was talking to my lover about this. This is kind of to my lover because I'm very open about, you know, like if I see an attractive man or if I'm having feelings or if I'm turned on to to somebody, then I tell my lover freely. I mean, even if I don't, if I'm not even contemplating doing something, I tell him right away. I'm like, damn, like that man was like, mm, and I start describing and I get into it and I allow my turn on to be seen. And that's how I stay authentic. That's how I keep in that, in that communication, in that connection and keeping that little tidbit alive. Okay, so to let that desire be vocalized, even if there's no intent on acting on it, just to allow self to feel it. He shared something very interesting back with me. He said that he notices other women, but when he notices other women, he chooses to look away. He doesn't give really any time or attention to letting himself feel that desire. And I thought to myself, I even asked him, I was like, why? Like, let's discuss the pretty woman. Let's talk about her ass. Let's talk about her boobs. Let's talk about her beautiful. Here she is. Let's, let's share it. Let's share it. Let's feel that desire. And he was just like, it's just a program, right? It's just like, I don't feel like I should be doing that. It's not, I know that it's not bad to recognize somebody else, their attractiveness. That's not okay. And here's the thing, when we do something like that, okay, and yes, I'm throwing him under the bus, bless him, we love him, but he's going under the bus for this purpose. And the point is, is that when we allow something like that to happen, because we do this in our relationships, in our intimate relationships, big time, we end up shutting down our desire for life. We turn off our turn on, and we think that we're just doing it around the Right? Like, okay, I'm just not going to notice, like for me, I'm not going to notice attractive men anymore. I'm not going to notice when I have chemistry with somebody. If I have chemistry with somebody, I'm just going to shut that shit down. I'm not, not going to entertain it. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to let it seep into me and feed me at all. No, I'm going to shut it down because that's danger, danger, danger. That means that I am not being committed. That means that I'm not being a good partner. That means this, that means that, you know, all this kind of stuff that we get caught up in. Oh my God, what will somebody think if they catch me feeling this way, seeing this, acting like this, blah, 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 blah. We do it all. What we do and we do this a lot subject right so we do this god forbid that does end up happening months go by three years go by we'll just use the three year mark three years go by and we've shut it off we shut it off we shut it off we ignored it we've avoided it we've turned away from it We've dimmed it down, right? And what we start to notice is that other areas of our life start to dim down too. Other areas of our life are not as enriching, fulfilling. They're not as exciting. And we lose our play. We lose our joy. And we wonder why. Like, where where did that person go? Where did the old me go? Where is that playful person? And you know what's even funnier? Partners. Who we're doing all this for, right? To make them feel safe, to make them feel us know our commitment, to make them know that we love them, right? So we do all of this so that we can 
relationship. And then you get three, four years down the road, if it takes that long, you get this a lot far down the road and guess what happens? That partner starts to go, you're just not you anymore. Like we don't do, we don't do these things anymore. Like we're not playful anymore. You're not as, you're not as, you know, you're, you're not as turned on. You're not wanting that much sex anymore. You're not, I don't think you desire me. I don't feel desired. I don't, I don't feel this. I don't feel that. And they start to question all of this stuff because we've shut our stuff down and we shut it down for a, a good reason. But what ended up happening is that we can't just shut down that one little good reason and not expect to shut it all down. And that's what happens is we shut it all down. We go in with the best intent to close off potential dangers and end up shutting everything off. The whole system, the whole system goes down. It crashes. And then our desire, our ability to feel, our ability to connect, our intimacy, our love, all of that stuff, it just starts to get squished and starts to dwindle because it's not being fed been denied because it has been ignored in my push that hard again there's the wall and you don't get to choose what you and what you don't wall out you can't just have a wall and then, and then a wall it doesn't work like that right you build the fucking wall to keep it all out and it all stays out until in that box that you have yourself in being settled in, you know in this in this freaking tower that nobody puts you there but you and you can say yeah but my partner this and yeah but I don't want anybody to think that and yeah but yeah but yeah but yeah but yeah but you're dying yeah but you're 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 literally starving you are just wasting away and I was just talking to somebody today about this very very subject beautiful, beautiful, you know, goddess out there who is so powerful and so turned on to life. And if you saw her, you'd be like, no way is she going through this. But she is like so many people out there. She is going through exactly this. And you look at her and you'd be like, no, there's no way. But you know what? She's also seeing that in the shutdown, because she shut out even smiling at the opposite sex, that her income started to go down business owner, you know, and she's to a certain lifestyle and even her crashing, everything is crashing around her because she shut the energy down, achieving energy flow through her. She shut down creative energy. She shut down being magnetic, magnetic. She shut down just having that vibe and the reality Excited, when we're happy, when we're feeling good, when we're feeling confident, that makes us magnetic. That brings us everything that we want. And when we turn off all those desires and we start to just shun them, well, that's where all the other stuff comes into play. That's where our life just stops being and vibrant. And if it's never been juicy and yummy, then maybe you've been living in this lockdown for a lot longer than what you might realize. And if the lockdown, and what I just said scares the fuck out of you because you're like, hey, no, I can't face my desires. Oh my God, that's going to wreck my world. I'm going to blow up my village if I, if I face my desires. If I allow myself to entertain a desire, then what's that going to do? Well, here's the thing. You've weakened the muscle around desire, okay? You've weakened it. And you don't know how to hold space for it. So it makes you extremely hungry. Like a ravenous, and an, an, I can't talk today, like a ravenous animal who has been tied up in the corner, right? And food has been so close to it, it can smell it, it can see it, but it's not had any. That's, that's what you've done to yourself when you shut down that desire, when you don't even acknowledge it. You've tied yourself up like that. And then you start to get hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. And then if that animal breaks free, well, then it's going to come charging forward and it's going to go after whatever food it can get, right? And it's not going to be very controlled. So what's the answer? 
The answer is don't shut down your desire to begin with. Pay attention right now to, oh my God, I've been desiring all this stuff and I've been ignoring it and I've been avoiding it out of fear. Fear, fear, fear. How is fear serving you thriving? How is fear serving your heart expanding? How is fear serving you being strong and healthy and powerful? How is fear serving you being embodied? How is fear truly serving your relationships? How is fear serving your finances? It's not. It's not. You know what? Bold action, bold feeling, bold movement. That's that's what gets you exactly what you want in life. You have to think differently than the masses. You have to realize that this desire that you're holding, these things that you want for, maybe you can't have them exactly the way you want them right now. Maybe that's true. And maybe it's not smart to just go and grab at them, right? Because you can throw things away from you in that, in that instance when you are premature about it. But to desire it, to acknowledge the desire, and even to speak it, to write about it, to imagine it, daydream. That's how you start to get that momentum, that energy coming back to the creation of that desire. So I ask you today, ask you today, where, where in your life have you innocently shut something down, a desire down, shut down your energy because of fear? Where have you allowed yourself to just give it up, give up that turn on in your life? Where have you turned yourself off? And how can you start to see that there's kind of a ripple effect to you allowing it to just go away? And what are those things that you're wanting that you're not acknowledging? And what would life be like if you actually gave yourself permission to say yes? to say yes to you, to say yes to love, to say yes to play, to say yes to joy, happiness, to say yes to abundance and receiving. Can you imagine a life where you said yes and then it just was coming? Because there is a life like that. And it's beautiful and it's yummy and it's what we're all supposed to have. So go get yours. Go claim your life today, everybody. Of course, if you ever want a little bit more one-on-one than just a conscious coffee or an article from me or anything like that, know that that is available. I am running a special uh, that you could just reach out to me if you are interested. It is $500 for four intensive sessions for the month of October only. Okay, for the month of October only. October is ass kickery month. Okay, we are in the final quarter of this crazy fucking year of 2020, where all of us have had our asses kicked. So I decided, how about we get together and kick 2020's ass just a little bit, at least give it a little, you know, spin on the tail side of it, where you get an opportunity to work with somebody who is living a thriving life in the midst of all of this. Okay, I've been traveling, I've been making love, I've made a shit ton of money, I feel damn fucking good in my own skin. Family's happy, healthy. Everything's going great over here in Plano, Texas at Kendall's house. Yeah, it is. You want some of that? Well, then let's get some ass kickery done in October. Let me kick your ass, love all over you, of course, in the most loving way. That's the only way I kick your ass. Although I can be pretty brutal, so I hear. But it's all in love. It really truly is. It all is in love. Let me kick your ass October and know that you can have that life that you want, but it's up to you to claim it. You have to give yourself permission for it. And maybe that permission starts by saying yes to yourself and getting some ass kickery from me. Yeah, because I'd love for you to bend over and let me kick your ass. Okay, there you go. There's my great big speech. All right, guys. I love you guys. I will most likely catch you tomorrow or Sunday with a conscious coffee since I'm just chilling. Yep. And as always, remember, stop existing. Start living. It's in your hands. It's in your court. It's time for you to say yes to you. I love you guys, and I will catch you on another day with another Conscious Coffee. Bye, everybody.